Hello and welcome, my name is Kashmar and you're watching Geek Factor. Today I would like to present you with a how to play video, a tutorial for the game Solar City. Solar City is a city building game designed by Viola Kijowska and Marcin Robka, about to be published by Games Factory. Now, on June 12, a Kickstarter campaign for this game will launch and I will provide a link to the campaign as soon as the campaign launches. Now, it is a near future, not so distant future would probably be a better term. The air pollution has gotten out of control. It's getting harder and harder to breathe and we must think about that the next, basically every single building that we build in our cities. We must make sure that the way we build them is the most eco-friendly eco way possible because of a quite simple reason. We kind of all need air to breathe. So, with every building you place, you must make sure that you can figure out some way to make the, your city in general eco-friendly, so it is friendly and won't kill any of us, right? So, this game will allow you to do that. You will be placing skyscrapers, but you will also be upgrading to sky gardens, which are a lot more environment, environmentally friendly than any buildings you might have in your city. So now, let's get on with the setup, how to set up the game. Now, I won't prefer any specific variant when it comes to the different number of players, but every time I get to a point where the number of players has any effect on the setup, I will mention it. So, let's begin there. The first thing that happens is every player receives a city board, eight activation tokens, one skyscraper marker, and one sky garden marker. Now what happens is, with those two markers, we put them on zero spot of the respective tracks. So we put the skyscraper marker on this spot and the sky garden marker on this spot. Each player places those activation tokens nearby. Nearby we also create the common supply of our e-coins, which come in the values of 1, 3, 6 and 12. Our solar points, which are basically our victory points in this game, these come in the values of 1, 3 and 9 and also our loan tokens. We also take our main board, also place it nearby and we place the round marker on number one spot, indicating that the first round is about to begin. We now take the building cards, we give them a good shuffle and then we deal six of them out at random and place them in a row near, uh, next to each other like so. After we do that, we rearrange them according to their values. Now, their values can be seen in the top left corner represented by the number of pips. Now, we take those cards and we rearrange them so that we have the highest value on the left and the lowest value on the, on the right, right. So, they are in descending order. If it so happens that there are two cards or more of the same value, the values are represented here in the top left corner by the number of pips. If it so happens that we have two or more cards with the same value, we simply leave them in the order they were when we first laid out those cards in a row. We take the remaining six building cards and we put them back into the box. We then take the building tiles that correspond with the building cards and we place them in the same order as we did the building cards after rearranging them. Also, the remaining building tiles, we also put them back into the box. Now, if it is your first or one of your first plays of Solar City, we suggest you keep those building cards in front of you. But if you're familiar with the game, you can take even those buildings and return them to the box as well. Now, with the remaining building tiles that we have in the game, we have to create three stacks. Now, before we do that, though, we have to eliminate a certain number of tiles and keep a certain number of tiles in each of those six stacks. Now from each stack, so from an each stack, each stack is from for now is of one type of building. From each stack we have to, with each stack we have to leave a certain number of tiles remaining and that number depends on the number of players. So for two players, the number of tiles we have to have left are five, with three players it's seven and with four players we leave all nine tiles in the stack. Now we create those three stacks and how do we do that? Not in any random way. We follow the instructions found on this page right here in the rulebook. So we take these two stacks and we form them into one. Now we take these two stacks and we form them into one. And then we take these two, the middle two stacks and we form them into one. Now what happens now is we give those a good shuffle. 
We make sure whenever we place those buildings right now during the preparation, we make sure that each building tile is showing the skyscraper side up. The way we can tell is, for example, by this icon in the bottom right corner. This is the icon for the skyscraper and this is the icon for the sky garden. Now, we make sure when we shuffle that we do not flip any of the tiles the other side up by accident. So we shuffle them very, very carefully. After we've done that with all three stacks, we place them in the designated area above the main board. Now we take the public structure tiles and we remove a certain number of those as well and that number also depends on the number of players. Now the number of the public structure tiles we have to have left is for two players we have to have 10 public structures, for three players we have to have 14 public structures and for four players we have to have 18 public structures. The not needed, the unnecessary public structures go back into the box. We then shuffle those we place them right here next, with the pile, we place it face down next to the main board and then we deal the top three right here into these designated spots underneath the main board. Now if it so happens that we have two of the same type of public, public structures, we return one of them to the bottom of the pile and we place a new one. And we keep doing that if more similar or more of the same uh, uh, public structures appear, we keep doing that until we have three different public structures under the main board right here. Now we determine the first player. The first player is the one who most recently did an environmentally friendly thing. Now if you can't decide what that thing is, let's just say that the last person to take out the trash is the first player. And now we have to deal the starting e-coins that each player receives. Now that, are, that is also slightly different when it comes to a different number of players in the game. So with two players what happens is the first player gets six e-coins and the next player gets nine of them. The, in the free player game what we do is we give the first player six coins, the next player nine coins and the third player twelve coins. In a four player game, we give six coins to the first player, nine coins to the second player, 12, point, 12 coins to the third player, and 15 coins to the fourth player. Okay, so now that we've set up the game, we can get to like a general overview, and not just of the game, how the game works, what is our aim, but also uh, what are some of the key concepts here, like what can we find on our city boards, on our building tiles, on, for example, what is the deal with, the, with those pesky loan tokens. Let's take a, take a look now, like a general overview of the game. So let's go over some of the key concepts of the game. Now, what will happen throughout this game? Each, each player will take their turn and perform their actions. Now, what happens then is we will be building your own city, basically. And you'll do that by placing tiles from the, these stacks right here onto your city board. Now the game can end in one of two ways. The first way is to reach a certain round. Now for two players it's round number five, for three players it's round number seven, and for four players it's round number nine. The other way is for one of the players to have the entire city board filled out with city with building tiles. Now in each round players will be taking turns performing actions. Now on each turn they will have three actions to choose from and they will perform one. Now it will be either building a skyscraper, transforming the skyscraper into a sky garden, or building one of the public structures. Now when you do that you will also have a chance to activate certain columns or certain rounds and uh, uh, rows and by activating them you will be able to activate each skyscraper that is in this current row or current column. Now whenever you are upgrading to a sky garden however you will not be activ activating any of the skyscrapers in the same row or in the same column you will instead be activating those uh, this particular sky garden that, you're, that you just created by resolving what is on this token right here. So basically skyscrapers give you bonuses when they are activated as part of rows or columns that are being activated. Sky gardens give you bonuses when they are created simply by upgrading skyscrapers to sky gardens and public structures are building that give you bonuses for, from the moment you place them on your city board till the end of the game. 
Now let's take a closer look at some of the components. Now this is your city board. In here you will find obviously slots in which you will be placing those building tiles that you've seen before. Now let me tell you, let me stress this because this is very important. This is now how this is going to look in the final product. There have already been changes made from the moment I received this prototype to the moment that I'm shooting this video. I have just looked at the Solar City fan page on Facebook and they already have a different look for the city board and just please bear that in mind, okay? Now, Every, every city board has four rows and four columns, which give you together a 16, 16 spots in which you can place your buildings. Now, each row has a number assigned to it, so one, two, three, four, and each column has a letter assigned to it, so A, B, C, D. Now, next to the grid, you can find two tracks. Those two tracks, those two rows, tracks will, keep, will allow you to keep track, as the name will suggest, of how many skyscrapers and sky gardens you have in your city. Next to each column and next to each row you have a place to place your activation token. Throughout the game you will be placing skyscrapers or upgrading skyscrapers to uh, sky gardens or placing public, public structures which will allow you to activate certain rows and certain uh, columns. Now you will be indicating that by placing those activation markers in a next to a given column or a given row. Let's take a closer look at those tiles now. Now what we can find on those tiles is first and foremost the artwork on the name of the each building. Now the second thing you can find uh, is the icons that show you what type of building that is. For example, these are the icons for skyscrapers, for public structures and on the other side for sky gardens. Now, in terms of skyscrapers, the information we have on this side up, on the side of the skyscraper, the in information that is interesting to us when it comes to thinking of the building as a skyscraper and the inform is the information on the bottom of the tile. Because every time a skyscraper is activated, it gives you the bonus indicated on the bottom of the tile. The information on the top of the tile is the bonus that you will receive once you upgrade this skyscraper into a sky garden. This is why it's kind of like uh, in black and white this information right here. So this is just to inform you what can happen if you upgrade this building into a sky garden. As you can see, if you upgrade it, the bonus you receive from it as a skyscraper disappears because you no longer use this building as a skyscraper. But this information right here on the top is in nice full color and this is the one-time bonus you receive whenever you upgrade this building into a sky garden. The last thing I want to tell you about are those loan tokens because throughout the game you will be spending money and it might so happen that you run out of money and you can't afford to build a particular building. In that case you can take out a loan. Now whenever you take out a loan you take this loan token and you take free e-coins. Those coins you can spend immediately and make good use of them. However, you keep the token and you keep the token until you can pay the loan back. And when you pay the loan back, you'd ha you have to pay six. So you borrow free, but you return six to the bank. This is not an action and you can perform it with your main action. Now, the same goes with paying the loan. You can pay the loan back as part of your main, as part of your turn with resolving your main action. Now, if you are unable to return the money, to pay the money back, and you are stuck with any of the loan tokens until the end of the game, you can have as many loan tokens at any given point as you like, but you don't really, you wouldn't really like that. Because in the end of the game, each loan token that you weren't, weren't able to dispose of throughout the game takes away one of your victory points. Okay, we're done with that. Let's move on to some of the specifics. Uh, so, this game is played over a series of rounds. The, round, the number of rounds depends on the number of players. With two, play, with, five, with two players, it is five rounds. With three players, it's seven rounds. And with four players, it is nine rounds. Now, the game ends after that, either after that, or when one of the players fills out their entire city board with buildings. Now, how each round is played, is we begin with the first player and then we move on clockwise with every other player and every player performs their turn. On their turn a player performs one of the three possible actions to choose from. He can either, he or she can either build a skyscraper, 
build a public structure, or upgrade a skyscraper to a sky garden. This is the free action. These are the free actions you can choose from. Now we perform those actions until we get to the end of the round. So now let's discuss those actions in more detail, how you perform those and what happens at the end of each round. Now the first action I want to tell you about is building a skyscraper. The first thing you have to do when you choose to build a skyscraper is to pick one of the available skyscrapers. When I say available, I mean the ones that are on the top of each of the three stacks. After you've done that, you pick a place where you can build your skyscraper. Once you've picked this building, once you've chosen a building, you can place it in any empty space that you like. Now, you also have to pay for this building. Now, the amount you pay is equal to the number of uh, skyscrapers you already have on the board. So the first one is free. It doesn't cost you anything. But now you have to ship place, uh, move the mar tra marker right here on this track to indicate that you already have one skyscraper on your city board. So then for future turns when you want to perform this action, you will know how much it will cost to perform this action, to, to build a new skyscraper. Now once you've done that, you can activate. Now as you can see there are those activation spots near the row and near the column in which you've placed the skyscraper. Now it might so happen that you have placed the skyscraper in a column or in a row that have both been activated in this round and you probably wouldn't want to do that because whenever you place a skyscraper you might want to get something out of it immediately. So when you place a skyscrapers and skyscraper and both of these are free, so an activation spot near the column it is at or the activation spot near the row it is at, you can choose which one you want to activate. You activate it and then you immediately activate each skyscraper in that column or in that row. When you do that, each skyscraper gives you the bonus that you can see right here in this very spot on this very tile. So obviously if this is your first skyscraper you ever build in any particular row or in any particular column, only this building will give you any bonuses. But for future turns, a single activation may give you a very nice bonus from a lot of buildings. So it's very important that the only things that get activated are the skyscrapers. Public structures and sky gardens are never activated. Now the next possible action is to build a public structure. First thing you do is you pick one of the three public structures you have underneath your main board. You take whatever coins or tokens are on that public structure and you keep them in your personal supply. And you then choose a place for the public structure to build. Again, you can build this in any place that had, it doesn't matter if that place has activated, has been, is in a row that has been activated or is in a column that has been activated. All that matters is that this is an empty spot. Now each public structure you build costs you exactly six coins. And doesn't matter how many public structures you already have in your city, every new one costs you six coins. You immediately refill the empty uh, space underneath the main board with a new public structure tile. Now if by any chance you've placed the public structure in a place that hasn't been already activated and by that I mean row or column, you can in this very moment you will activate the row or column in which you've placed the public structure. If both of these are free then you can choose, if only one of them is free then you simply activate the other one. And every skyscraper in that column or in that row will now activate as well. On top of that, the public structure will now give you a special ability that is active from this point until the end of the game. The final action you can perform is upgrading a skyscraper into a sky garden. Now, first of all, you have to pick a skyscraper to upgrade. Now, here is one rule. The skyscraper cannot be in a row or call in a place. It cannot be a skyscraper that's both in a row or in a row or end column that have been activated. So you have to pick a so this skyscraper for example cannot be upgraded as your action because both the row and the column it is in have been activated. So now we have to pick a different skyscraper. Let's say you had a skyscraper right here. As you can see the row have been has been activated but the column no. So now we can perform the upgrade action. The way you perform the upgrade action is, first of all, you have to pay for it. Now, how much does it cost to upgrade a skyscraper to a sky garden? 
and costs you the amount of sky gardens you already have on your board times two. So the first one is free, the same as, uh, the same as it was with skyscrapers. The first one is free, but every other one will cost you more. So for example, the moment you place, the, you upgrade a skyscraper into a sky garden, like this, this is the first one, it was free. You also move the marker right here on this track to indicate that the next one, the next ones will cost you more. Now, the case, the, the, the way the board was uh, right now, we should have had this marker on the number two spot because we have two skyscrapers. Now we've upgraded this skyscraper into a sky garden, which means we move this marker to number one position but we move this marker back one position because we've reduced the number of skyscrapers we have on the city board. Whenever you upgrade a, city, a skyscraper into a sky garden, it gives you an immediate bonus. It is a one-time bonus that you only receive when you build, when you upgrade the skyscraper to a sky garden. Now, when you place a sky garden right there, you activate the row or column it is in. Remember about that. Now, once you've done that, every skyscraper in the row or column activates. The same as with public structure. Once you've placed a public structure and there was the possibility of activating the row or column that was in, every skyscraper in that column will get activated. Because that's how city activation works. Whenever you activate a row or column, the skyscrapers and only the skyscrapers in that row or column activate. The sky gardens give you the bonuses the moment they are created and that's it. The uh, public structures give you the bonuses, the, give you new abilities that last throughout the rest of the game, but only sky, skyscrapers get activated when you activate a row or a column. Whenever you activate in your turn with your buildings a column or a row, every other player places the activation marker in the same column or in the same row. Only difference is they do not receive any of the bonuses. So when, when you, for example, when you've placed the skyscraper right here and you place the activation marker right here on, with the column C, which means you've activated every skyscraper in column C, every other player in the game around the table also places the activation marker with the, at the column C, but they do not activate any of the skyscrapers in that column. Only you receive that bonus. Now we play that like that, every player performs their actions until every player has every activation spot around the board filled with an activation marker. Once every activation marker with every player has been placed in the right in the in the activation marker spots, we then reach the end of the round. Now what happens with the end of the round is the first is we move the round marker on the round track here on the main board. Every player removes the activation marker from the activation marker spots and returns them to their personal pool. We then place two coins on every public structure tile that is uh, underneath the uh, city board, the main board. Now, what is important to remember here is that if any of the public structure has already eight coins on top of them, then instead of placing a, a ninth and tenth coin on top of that uh, tile, we instead place a one, one solar point on that tile. Now the next round will begin with the player sitting to the left from the player who triggered the end of the round. And the game continues like that. Each round continues like that. Pl players perform single actions each time it is their turn. Now the game ends when we reach the end of the round specific to the number of uh, players that are playing the game or until one of the players have filled out their entire city board. Now what happens then? Well the game ends and we have to count up the score. Now we've been collecting some victory points, some solar points throughout the game, but there are some other points we might receive at the end of the game and also some points we might lose at the end of the game. Let's take a look at those. Now for every loan token that you are unable to get rid of, you lose one victory point, one solar point. Also, for every empty space on your city board, you also lose one solar point. In this case, we would lose four of them. But we also gain one solar point for every sky garden that we've placed on our city board. Here we have three sky gardens, 
which means we get extra three solar points. Also, for every 12 coins you return to the general supply, you receive one solar point. You add those on top of the solar points you've uh, accumulated during the game, and whoever has the most points wins. And that's it. That's all you need to know to be able to play Solar City. Again, let me remind you, prototype. Things might change. The best thing I can suggest for you is to follow Solar City on Facebook. Then you will be up to date with any changes made to the game. Now, like I said, the Kickstarter campaign launches on June 12. I will post the link in the description below. If you have any questions about anything you've seen here, please do not hesitate, them, hesitate to ask them in the comments. I will answer them as soon as I get a chance. I will also ask the publisher and the designers to take a look and maybe they will be, answered to answer, uh, to, maybe they will be able to answer you as well. Until then, thank you for watching. My name is Kashmar, this is Geek Factor and I hope I see you soon. Thank you and bye-bye.